Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on Wednesday, the 26th of March, 2021, on Vision Store's Exploring Technology with David Woodbridge webinar on Reading Solutions. My name is Tony Wu, and I'll be one of your hosts today, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, David Woodbridge, our National Retail AT Advisor, and Troy Gladwell, one of our Retail Coordinators. I'd like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. This webinar will be recorded for you and you can access the recording later via our Vision Australia YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have for the team throughout the session by using the chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat function through keystroke alt H, or if you use a Mac, command H. We'll answer as many questions as we can as time permits. Please note that this webinar will provide a sample of the various reading solutions that Vision Store offers. If you require further information on a particular product, you can contact the Vision Store team or visit your local Vision Australia office. Welcome, David and Troy. Hey, go, man. Good afternoon or good morning, where you may be viewing or listening. <laughs> I think we'll start off with um, magnification. So basically, uh, magnification allows you to enlarge what you're trying to see, whether it's text or an object. And magnification devices can be either um, optical. So I'm just going to show you some examples um, where there's a lens and it's a specific, and it's a specific uh, power. Please note that the lower the strength of the magn optical magnifier, the larger the field of view. And as you go higher in strength, the more constricted the, the field of view in the actual magnifier itself. Optical magnifiers are great for spot reading tasks. So for example, if you're out and about shopping and you just wanted to look at price tag information, um, that's where you can whip out your optical magnifier and look at the price tag. One of the tips that I provide to my clients when using an, op an optical magnifier is you first hold the magnifier down onto the reading material and slowly bring it up until you get the right focal distance so you can see the text or the print uh, within the lens itself. And um, the focal distance will vary from person to person, but if you do it that way, it will be a lot easier for you to be able to see the text more clearly. Um, optical magnifiers do come in handheld units, as, as I've just shown you. And this is the Moblux range uh, from Eschenbach, which we sell at Vision Store. They also come with a, a base as well. So basically, the handle of the optical magnifier slides into the base, uh, into the Mo base, and then you have it on the table, and then you can use it as a stand magnifier. So you just glide it along the table to enable you to read the newspaper. Um, or magazine or document. Um, I guess with everyone's magnification needs are quite different. So if you haven't used a magnifier before, we highly recommend that you have a low vision assessment with one of our orthoptists or optometrists. They'll go through various um, vision assessments with you to help you determine what would be the most appropriate magnifier for your needs and goals. Uh, so I talked about spot reading tasks where you basically just want to look at certain um, uh, parts of a document to find out the information that you require. If you're looking at leisure reading or large volume reading where you want to read a book um, or the newspaper, for example, um, digital magnifiers or electronic magnifiers might be more applicable because they do have um, a larger screen size. So the one that I'm holding up at the moment in front of my camera is called the Explore 8. Basically, it has an eight inch screen um, and it has a camera um, behind the screen where you place your reading material, you place your reading material on um, and then you just um, <clears throat> glide it along the, the table to read the text and it just comes up on the screen. One of the great things about digital magnifiers is that you can increase the magnification size of the text. So if you need the text to be larger to enable you to see, um, you just push the, the plus button on the device itself and it will enlarge the text to a side that you can see. 
And one of the other advantages of digital magnifiers is that you can change the contrast. So having different contrast backgrounds can enhance the text to make it a bit easier to see. Um, the common um, contrast backgrounds would be a black on white and white on black, um, followed by a black on yellow and yellow on black that really has that difference uh, in the background and the color of the text text to enable you to see a bit more easily. What I've shown you are the handheld units, but you can also have what we call desktop or CCTVs, where it has a large screen and the camera is either sitting behind the, the monitor or in front of the monitor, depending on the model that you get. And what's great about desktop or CCTVs is that it has that nice large screen size. So you can have more of the document showing up on the screen. Because you've mag enlarged the text, you will have to scan the page. So a lot of the CCTVs or desktop magnifiers have an XY table that you can place a reading material on. And you basically, you just glide the XY table up, down, left and right to scan the page. And you'll find that a lot of the CCTVs have what we call um, optical character recognition or text-to-speech capabilities. So you push a button, it takes a picture of the printed text and then it will read it aloud to you. So if you ever experience any eye strain or visual fatigue, it will enable you to listen to your document and continue reading, which is great. Is there any comments you wanted to add, Troy? So. Tony, I might just have my camera on here as well, so I can sure. um, expand a little bit on some of the things that you touched on there. Mm -hmm. um, so as a client myself, I also think whenever uh, I'm looking for a reading device uh, or uh, some sort of aid to assist me with my reading, I have to ask myself a couple of very important questions as well. You know, first up, like you mentioned, is it going to be a spot reading task or is it going to be leisurely reading? So what does that entail? So if it's going to be leisurely reading, you probably don't want to be holding onto a magnifier and a book or, or a document trying to navigate your way down for a long period of time. Um, that could be very t fatiguing in its on its own right. Mm. Um, so I just want to touch on, I'll just grab a, a device to show everybody. Um, so we've got simple devices available as well uh, that can be hands-free options. So something like this, you can just slip over your head. What I'm actually holding up is called a chest magnifier. Um, it's got a cord that goes around your neck with the base uh, of the magnifier being approximately five inches across. Um, so you can, it, it will stand out from your chest um, while you have a document underneath it and you can read through that. That's a, a nice, cheap, effective way to um, navigate around some of your reading needs that you may encounter. Um, or, or what we might do now is pass on to David so he can talk about another element of reading aids that may be able to assist him. We'll come back to Tony and myself later. Excellent. All right, that sounds good. Let me just uh, turn on my proper microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, dear. <clears throat> People have to pardon me a little bit. I got a very new toy the other day and I've been playing with it and I haven't got, got it all organized yet. But when Tony was talking about and Troy were talking about <clears throat> how you can get both, it just closes this application down. I'm currently using my iPhone, by the way. With the smartphone in general, now this applies not to just to the iPhone, but the Android phone. And of course, the most common Android phone is a Samsung phone. But what you can do is sort of two things in combination for each other. So the first thing is you can run an app on your smartphone and you can get these apps that are basically magnification apps. So they use the camera in the smartphone to do things like zoom in to make the print bigger. You can change your co uh, color contrast. So you could have black and white, white on black, blue on yellow, whatever you like your color filters to be. Um, and as I said, it just uses the camera and that's pure video magnification. Um, and I believe, Tony, you've got a, a stand there that we absolutely highly recommend for this type of thing. So what I do. you effectively do, if you're, are you currently holding it up to the camera, Tony? I am. <laughs> Excellent. Good job, mate. If you, if you basically um, put the iPhone on the little cradle and then or the Samsung phone then point it at the table and put a document underneath it, then whatever's on that document will either be in video magnification with a magnification app or it'll be spoken out to you. So when Tony mentioned optical character recognition, 
or print reading, um, then whatever's on that piece of paper will be read out by the iPhone or the Android slash Samsung phone. And the reason why we recommend Stan to use both for video magnification and for OCR is it's one way of holding the camera steady because the worst thing you can do with both magnification and trying to read and trying to read electronically yeah. is to have your hand shaking all the time. So you pop the, the smartphone in the stand, you point it down, you run the appropriate app you want, magnification or ICR, and then either read visually or read um, with the spoken word being spoken out to you what's on their hard copy. And they both work really, really nicely. So for example, um, I've got a piece of paper here. I've just got some, uh, some stuff that turned up at my front door yesterday. And I end up with these pamphlets all over the place because they just come out of these boxes. So Dog. Messages. let me just Apps open feature. up Seeing AI. Seeing AI. Channel. Seeing AI. And I'm going to make Channel. sure short text. that I'm on the short text one. And I'm just going to point my camera at the, do at the, at the recording and podcasting pad. RJS Beefxler dynamic microphone with accessories. USB. Okay, so I've just realized that Mandelong. this pamphlet is actually the, I bought a podcasting TV pack, which contained a dynamic mic and uh, a stand and some, some other things. Uh, otherwise, this pamphlet, what just said I'm holding out to the camera, if people listen to the center audio, I wouldn't have been able to identify. Um, and the really nice thing about the short text function in particular is that you can run it and you can point it at not only reading material like a pamphlet, um, and you know, a paperback novel, but if you think about it, um, and I know we're talking about reading options, but there's nothing about you also reading stuff in your pantry with this sort of stuff. But oh, geez, I've turned my video camera off. Sorry, how's that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being polite. That really that is really funny. My first demo that I did back in 1990. Um, I was waving around my hands and pointing at the screen and nobody said anything about me not having my video camera on. So uh, thank you for that tip. That was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> All right. So this was a piece of paper I was using to actually read um, with my uh, iPhone. And the, the app that I was talking about is called Seeing AI from Microsoft, and it's absolutely free. Um, you can just use the straight magnification app in the iPhone or on uh, you know, Android slash Samsung as well. But honestly, if you stick in magnifier in either the iOS app store or the Google play store, um, quite a few of them are free and they do a good job. So um, I would just have a play to sit your best one. But when you think about it, you're literally replacing, if you don't want to spend a large amount of money on, you know, a proper video magnifier, or a proper reading machine or anything else, you're literally turning your smartphone with a, a, a stand into either a reading machine to stuff to read out electronic via speech or to do it with magnification. Pretty, pretty cool. So that's me in a nutshell. And for the moment, I'm going to leave my video camera on so I don't actually do it again. I'm just going to mute my microphone. So I'm going to pass it back to you, Tony. Um, just following on what Troy had mentioned with the chess magnifier, not only is it good for reading tasks, but it's also good for um, arts and craft as well. So some of the um, hands-free options are obviously the chess magnifier that um, Troy had mentioned. Um, but we also have um, well, uh, a digital device called the Iris Vision, where basically it's uh, a Samsung phone. Um, in a VR headset. And basically there's special software in the actual phone itself called Iris Vision. And that allows you to magnify whatever you wanna be able to see, whether it's close up, something in the distance or um, something intermediate like arm's length away. And what's so versatile about the Iris Vision is that you know you, you can do um, various reading tasks with it as well, as well as um, hands-free manual tasks as well. Um, lighting is very important, particularly if you have low vision. So whether it's natural light in the room uh, or natural light coming from, uh, from the sun, but we do have a range of magnification lamps that can help you with reading tasks. And I think Troy has some that you can show. 
Um, what's the great thing about a magnification lamp is that there's a magnification lens um, that's on a flexible arm that you can sort of position the reading material on. And it also has inbuilt LED lights um, around the rim of the actual frame itself. So you just position the reading material on, you turn the light on and you get that extra illumination. So that extra lighting does help someone with low vision to be able to see the text uh, a little bit more easily. We have a question from Catherine, uh, sorry, Katharina. Uh, what was the app for the phone? And David was referring to the Seeing AI app, um, as well as inbuilt um, magnification apps that are inbuilt into the um, Apple iOS system, as well as Android system as well. But if you go to the Apple store or the Google Play store, you can always um, type in magnification. And there are lots of free apps that you can sort of use as well if you don't want to utilize the um, the, the main um, inbuilt magnification apps um, in iOS and in Android. Sometimes when magnification is no longer a viable option, meaning that you have to enlarge the text so big um, that it covers the whole screen. So you're actually only reading a word, a few words or a couple of words of a sentence. Uh, at a time that might not be viable for you because that's going to cause a lot of eye strain and visual fatigue. So when magnification is no longer a viable solution and you still want to be able to read your hard copy documents or text, a reading machine might be um, applicable. What I have in front of me is called the Read Easy Evolve. Uh, it's about the size of a, of a small cereal box. In front of it is a speaker. At the top, we have um, a camera. And on the top panel, we have a very simple to use control panel. Basically, we position the reading material in front of the camera in a landscape format, so we can capture up to an A4 size page. Um, but the great thing about the um, Ready Easy Evolved is that if I just move the camera and pop it into the um, A3 position, camera position, it can capture up to an A3 size document in a landscape position. All you have to do is push um, a, a tactile green button uh, on the control panel. The actual device itself will um, process or capture the, the document that's underneath the camera. Within a few seconds, it will read out the text aloud to you. So mm -hmm. any personal documents, um, bank statements, for example, um, they can uh, read the, the text aloud to you. And what's great about reading machines is not only can it read in English, but as long as the document is in that particular language, for example, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, um, it can read out that text to you as well. So it's good for non-English speaking um, uh, clients as well, if they want to be able to read um, a, a document or a book in their own language, which is great. Tony, we've just had another question come through. Yes. Um, what is the difference between the chest magnifier and something like a desktop magnifier? Yep. So a chest magnifier is um, what um, Troy had shown where you wear it um, on your neck. And it's purely just a, a magnification um, device that allows you to do hand-free tasks. Whereas... Um, a magnification lamp, the actual magnification lens is built within the actual lamp itself. Um, yes, they do offer very similar levels of magnification. Um, the magnification strength of a chest magnifier and a magnification lamp is usually no more than uh, three times. Um, so they're very, um, very low strength and it's ideal for someone who has very mild um, vision loss. So um, that's, uh, I guess it really depends on the type of task that you want to be able to do. Because um, uh, the chest magnifier allows you to basically sit anywhere and do that particular task. Whereas a magnification lamp, you're sort of confined to a table because you need power to be able to um, utilize the light portion of the, of the magnifier. I hope that answers your question, Rebecca. I think also, Tony, um, mm -hmm. it's also important to uh, mention that 
the, both of those two type of uh, magnification devices are static, so they're not adjustable. You yes. can't increase or decrease the magnification. Mm -hmm. They are just, uh, if it's a three times magnifier, it's a three times. Whereas yes. something like your desktop, a CCTV, or even in a video magnifier, allow you to actually adjust the magnification mm -hmm. um, anywhere from two times right up to 30 times for the explore rate, for example. Yes, that's a great point that you've raised, Troy, in that, you know, with optical magnifiers, it only comes in the one strength for that particular um, uh, magnification aid. So if you do need something stronger, you'll need to purchase another optical magnifier. Whereas with your electronic or digital magnifiers, yes, they are a little bit more expensive. But the great thing about that is that you can vary or adjust the magnification level mm -hmm. um, that I'd mentioned earlier and that Troy just mentioned just now again. Uh, but you can also do the contrast as well. Sometimes changing the contrast background enables you to see the text a bit more easily, uh, which is one of the advantages of um, uh, an electronic or a digital magnifier in that you can change Tony, the... can I just ask you a question too about the... Um... Just yep. pop it back to the task light for the moment. Sure. Is that a, could you, if you were in a workplace and you had to go between your office and a training room and that sort of stuff, is that the type of thing you would actually carry around or is there a more portable version of it if you just wanted to eliminate something like a, a, a document that got passed around in a meeting, for example, with task lighting? I would probably utilize a, um, a portable digital magnifier <laughs> that mm -hmm. um, probably like a five inch screen size that you can just pop in your pockets or in your mm. um, bag yeah. um, because all digital magnifiers have inbuilt LED lighting as well. Ah, okay. um, yeah. So um, that's the great thing about digital magnifiers is that it has inbuilt lights. You can adjust the magnification level. It does come in various screen sizes as well, depending on how portable you want the units or how large you want the screen to be able to fit um, more of a document that you want to be able to read. Um, for that particular um, scenario, I would definitely go with a digital magnifier, a portable unit. Also, please do remember, just uh, you know, following on from that there too, David, that if uh, you don't have access to a video magnifier, there are things uh, such as clip-on lamps and portable lamps that are available as well. Um, that can definitely be portable to take around or clip onto a book, for example, and then just easy to clip off and then clip onto the next document. Yep. So that will also give you that specific lighting. Yep. And if you have a smartphone with you as well, you can always utilize the magnification, inbuilt magnification uh, in your smartphone as well um, for that particular scenario as well. Um, Heading it over back to you, David. <laughs> oh, excellent. Okay. Um, all right. So, the next thing I wanted to sort of jump back a little bit to, so uh, Tony mentioned the Iris Vision. Yes. Uh, which is the one, you know, yeah. based upon yeah. Samsung. Excuse me. Yeah. Isn't it funny? My phone's been quiet all day and people have just started to email me now. It's incredible. <laughs> all right. So so the Iris Vision is purely a video magnification D3. portable system. And just turn my speech off. What this has got on these glasses here. Actually, I'll take them off. This is, and I know I've got my video camera on this time. This little thing is a, is a little camera that magnetically attaches to the side of some glasses. So basically any glasses, because you can actually mount the magnets on the glass, like sunglasses or anything else. And this particular one is, is the AllCam. And this one's the previous version to the current version. This one's just called the AllCam My i2. And literally it's hands-free. So you can simply point at any text in your environment and it will read it out to you. So it's purely a hands-free optical character recognition function for the camera. So if you've got your hands full doing something, uh, you point at you know, a newspaper article, a recipe. Um, if I was wearing this on my glasses at the moment, if I put my, my sunglasses on, I could actually have read that, um, that little brochure that I had about the Samsung podcasting setup. But it really is a good functional system. You've also got a barcode system in here as well, which is actually quite good. It does face recognition. So if you're in a meeting um, and you've previously added a person to the camera, a function inside it, it'll pop up. And when the camera detects the person's face, it'll say, you know, Tony, Troy, or whoever. Um, and if it's an unknown person, it just basically won't say anything. Um, but you have to, of course, of everything, you would basically ask the person, you know, look, if I see you in a meeting all the time, can I please take a photo of you with my all cam? So the next time 
um, you come into a room or anything else and the camera sees you, it'll be able to identify that you're there and so on. So that's actually quite handy. And it's also it's got, got some cute functions where you can sort of hold up your wrist like you're checking the time and it'll tell you the time. So it's got sort of really cute things like that. But to have something that's portable, so say with the RS vision, so rather than having to hold in, you hold your video magnifier, having to hold your smartphone to, you know, use the OCR app to read out a document, this is purely on your, your glasses and you simply point your finger at what you want to read and off you go. Really, really amazing technology for the OrCam. I'm just following, just following um, up on the all cam as well. Um, there are different ways that you can operate it. So mm. David mentioned, you know, using hands and simple finger gestures. There is a touchpad on the side of the actual um, all cam itself, and you yeah. can use the touchpad. Yeah. Uh, it also now includes voice commands as well, so you mm. can operate it using voice com commands. Um, so David had mentioned the um, the model that you clip onto a pair of spectacles, but you can also get a handheld unit called the All Cam Read. Um, basically, it's about ooh, uh, the size of a biro, <laughs> I would guess. <laughs> and um, I don't have I don't have a sample unit with me. I but... have one here for you. Just give me a second, I'll grab it for you. Oh, okay, done. great. Um, the great thing about this handheld unit is that. Um, it has, um, once you activate it and turn it on, it has LED lights that sort of allow you to position where you're gonna to try to capture. And uh, it can capture up to an A4 size uh, document. And um, it purely just reads aloud the, the actual um, printed text out to you. So Troy has the actual um, device in, uh, in the camera for you to see. So audio description of it, it's about an inch wide and about four inches long. So a very um, fit hand size quite easily, very simple device to use. Um, once it's actually turned on and activated, you'll get a, a voice command saying it's ready to go. And then all you have to do is hit the little button on the front of it. Um, just it's a little circular button right at the front of the device, which will actually give you a laser, laser grid guide um, and we'll take a photo. And that's as simple as it is. It will instantly read out what you've just captured within that guide. I guess the main difference between the all cam read uh, and the uh, all cam that attaches on the um, on your spectacles is that the all cam read purely just does the text to speech um, functions. There's no um, you can't capture someone's face for the facial recognition, um, and it doesn't have some of the other features like banknote recognition or mm -hmm. uh, barcode recognition that the all cam. Um, has so your camera is purely just to allow you to have printed text read aloud to you and it's a great um a uh, great option um you now if you're having any visual fatigue um, or eye strain that you can use that particular device to capture printed text and have it read aloud to you which is great Tony, I just want to um, ask a question, taking this from looking at this, uh, the equipment from a different perspective. Sure. When, how do we know when it's the correct time to actually move from a static magnifier to a uh, video magnifier, as opposed to the optical character recognition? What could be some of the warning signs or things to look out for as a client to actually have a look at different options? I guess it really... Um depends on your level of vision so if the vision if you if your vision is deteriorating you'll sort of have uh, you sort of know that uh, usually we start off with optical magnifiers um, and then once we go beyond a certain strength so maybe like five or six times where the the field of view is starting to get a bit more narrow in the optical magnifier and the individual wants to be able to read more or see more on the screen, that's where we would progress to um, a video magnifier, whether it's portable, um, handheld, or a desktop unit. And, it, and that sort of, and the type of reading task that you want to be able to do, or the type of manual task that you want to be able to do sort of dictates whether you want something portable or whether you want a desktop unit. As I had mentioned um, earlier, if you have to magnify something to say like 30 times the size and all you can see is a few letters <laughs> of a word uh, at a time, I think that's probably telling you that magnification is no longer um, 
a good option for you to access information and that you might have to move on to the to the next um, um, uh, uh, solutions, which is your mm. reading solutions, which is um, you can have your reading machines like what, what I showed you with the Read Easy Evolve, or you can have your um, OrCam or all cam read devices, those would probably be the the steps that I would go through with clients if they had um, issues with with their reading, mm. and and that would be the progression that I would follow. Tony, have we mentioned a um, have we mentioned one of the portable magnifiers yet that have both OCR and magnification built in? Um, no, I haven't actually. <laughs> mm. um, there are a couple of models out there that do um, do this. Um, one one uh, company that does it is Zumax. So Vision Store has the Zumax Snow 7, which is a 7-inch screen, and the Zumax Snow 12-inch. Um, basically, both of these video magnifiers, they obviously do the live magnification, but if you push a button, it will um, capture printed text and um, convert the text into speech. Uh, the great thing about the Zumax No. 7 and the 12 is that it comes with a stand that you mm. can um, pop the device on. So it allows you to capture the text a bit more easily rather than holding it to yourself, where um, you may not get uh, a, a perfect or a, um, a perfect um, blur. Uh, you might get a blurry capture if you, if you hold it um, onto the actual um, device itself. Um, I guess and there's, one... there's also another point that I want to make about ACR too is mm. when you go not only to Vision Australia, but you might go to another supplier or whatever else you might do, always take the stuff that you want to be able to even use video magnification with or use a text-to-speech ACR with. Bring your own stuff in because it's like everything. It's like when you go and see a beautiful new shiny car, you think, oh, look, that works so well. But with this technology, you, it's your stuff that you need to read. So don't rely on the shiny, beautiful printed out stuff that the, you know, the, the shop or whatever else might show you because, yes, it's going to work because that's what we're demonstrating. But taking your, you know, taking your bills, taking your, your newsletter from your school, uh, taking the pamphlets that you want to read them out of your mailbox, all that sort of stuff. So that then when you run these things through, you know, the, the normal, you know, optical character recognition stuff, when you run it through the magnification stuff, when you do the text-to-speech OCR, you are getting a real life um, solution coming back at you from those devices. So if it doesn't read your favorite newsletter from your school, if it doesn't read what you want to be able to read, then that particular product's not suitable. But as Tony mentioned at the beginning, just keep in mind that we're only highlighting particular products in sort of each one of these categories. And whilst, you know, must, whilst not one may work for you, there's also option two, three, and four. So um, I always say to people, just because something what doesn't work doesn't mean the rest of the products in the range doesn't work. And later on, we'll give you details about contacting the Adaptive Technology Specialist at Vision Australia uh, for a full thorough assessment if you also need an assessment as well. I think you touch on a really good point there, actually, David, too. Like one of the things that, uh, especially for the higher end technical um, stuff, that follow-up training is essential. Um, so while it gives you a great snapshot of what it can perform for you, um, we do have clients like for the iris visioning, for example, might actually feel a sense of nausea using it for the first time. But with repeated training and use, um, their strategies to actually get around that to make mm. sure you can optimize the use of it as well. It's no use having a, a, a reading device that's going to sit in your cupboard and do <laughs> nothing for you. No, no. <laughs> definitely. Um, we just had a comment just before about making sure um, or, or asking if we have all of our items in store for people to come in and have a check at. Um, the majority of the items we actually do, and if there's something that you actually really want to have a look at and we don't have it, we can always get it in for it to demonstrate with you as well. Mm. So um, Tony, I'm just wondering yes. whether we should whether we should transfer now from sort of hard reading, what I call sort of magnification or optical vision for print. Do we want to talk about some reading options either on a desktop computer, smartphone, or smart speakers now, or do we have other stuff to also cover off in our current segment? 
Uh, no, I'm happy to move on to to the next segment, David. And we've okay. got 25 minutes left as well. You always have never have enough time, do we? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So the first thing, so basically Vision Australia, our library, has lots of talking books, which the technical term is called daisy books, but basically they're talking books. And they're all done by human narrators. But this little device that I'm currently holding up here, this is called the Envoy Connect. It's a very basic daisy player. It literally has play, fast forward, rewind, sleep, um, volume and switch books, or it calls it the bookshelf button. And what's really nice about this one besides the price, and this is the first time I'm actually really, really happy to say the price because it's only $75 Australian. But if you've got a Windows computer, you register, register with the Vision Australia Library uh, if you pass the eligibility type stuff, you run some software called the kiosk software, and then it simply downloads all your current books, newspapers, and podcasts, if you subscribe them, which come from the Vision Australia radio, onto this little device, and you can listen to them. Uh, it's pretty amazing type stuff. Quite, a, It works extremely well. There's no... I guess the, the only setup really is for your account and running this, what's called the kiosk software, but everything else, you simply run the kiosk software, you plug this in, it says, please wait until we download all your books, i.e. books, newspapers, and magazines. Uh, and then you take the player out and you turn it on. So I'm gonna turn it on now with the on button. And it just takes a while to turn, there it is. It's gonna say the name of the book, hopefully in a minute. And if I press play. Chapter one. Remembered. I knew it would begin with the end and the end. Okay, that's basically, um, I've got the book. This book's called The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Sometimes it reads out the book title, sometimes it doesn't. But um, I can read any book in this, in this playlist I've currently got from the Vision Australia Library quite easily. Um, for people that like... For people that like speech very, very quickly, you can't do it with this one, right? So um, I, I never, I've got a, I've got an Audible account and everything else and I can't, don't, or can't, I was going to say can't stand. That's okay. I'll say can't stand. Uh, listen to people at normal speed anymore. I've got to at least be listening to two and a half times normal speed. This one will only just play the standard book, which you know, for most people is absolutely fine. So this is a really good basic daisy player. And I did notice a, 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 a question coming in about, can you access the books? You can. Um, it starts to get a bit tricky, though. Um, it doesn't get tricky on a smartphone, um, but it does get tricky on a desktop computer because what you need on a desktop computer is what's called a DAISY application to read the books on the desktop computer. And that applies both for a Windows computer or a Mac. But... If you have a iOS device, so iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, you have an Android such as a Samsung phone or a Samsung tab type tablet, then the Vision Australia actually has its own VA Connect app, and that's the name of it, VA Connect 2, as in Vision Australia. You run that on your smartphone uh, of choice. That will then log into the Vision Australia library and then you can simply access the books, magazines, newspapers, and podcasts that you subscribe to in the library. And that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and it works extremely nicely. So that's a really good option. The other option to access the library, let me just go and grab this other device here, is this one. Now, there's two versions of this device, which may be a bit confusing. So I've got them side by side here in front of me and, and facing up on the screen. Um, the thicker one is actually what's called the, the Victor Trek, and the thinner one is actually what's called the Victor Reader Stream. Now, I'm, I'll, I'll come back to the, the stream in a minute, but the it's Victor Reader up. Trek has two functions. That's why Amazon Echo complaining at me. has two functions. It's a GPS unit, so your global positioning is to where you are when you're actually around and about. Plus, it also has all the functions of this little one, the Victor Reader Stream. So what the Victor Reader Stream does in both versions of this, if you like, 
gives you access to an amazing amount of electronic information. So I can access the Vision Australia Library on this little device. I can access standard documents. So when I mean by standard documents, I can mean doc, doc files, text files, RTF files, HTML files, all the lot of them. Um, and if I want to, I could also, you know, put manual books on here from say a local council library oh, that were in mp3 format i can listen to that here as well and just a side note about the um both the victor reader stream and the and the actual track is that on the side here there's a really cute little button that you press and you can take audio notes to yourself as well so it's a really multifunctional device so the only, as I said, the only main difference between the Victor Reader Stream and the Trek is that the Trek's the Victor Reader Stream plus GPS. And I guess one other thing I should point out is that the, the Trek, this one supports a Bluetooth headset. This one doesn't. You would have a wired headset to listen to content. But this is probably one of my most versatile devices to ever recommend, recommend to anybody who wants to access portably electronic information really really amazing type stuff this things um i'll tell you i'm happy to move on and have a bit of a chit about actually let me let's do it how about we just do a real live demo of the of the vision australia library connect app so you can see what it sounds like actually so let me just put sure. my phone into my mixer all right you're about Steve to hear John. my my phone Audible. talking to Active. you music or seeing AI, Safari, Safari, seeing audible music, Kindle, VA, can, Isaac, VA Connect. Oh, there's VA active. Connect. V, judge Dread by Mike, VA Connect. Now, by the Sydney way. Morning. Now, just keep in mind that you're going to be hearing my voice speech synthesizer. If you were using magnification, you would have magnification on here as well. Um, let me just go to the top. Judge Dread by Mike Mora, Sydney Morning Herald, May 25th, 2020. So there's the Sydney Morning Herald from May 25th. If I double tap on it. Loading title. It says loading title. And if I come down, say, to the middle of the screen. Play button. There's the play button. Double tap. Call Sydney Morning Herald, Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. About this publication. This daisy title has been converted from another Next. format and made section. Next. News. Subsection. General. Headline, Farmer Guilty of Assaulting Five Women. Oh, I, play. I hate how you access any news article these days, and it's always about some violent thing happening in the community. All right, More let me come back out of there. More options, Judge Dread by Michael. Let's, Far Cry by John Harvey. Okay, English. let's try Far Cry by John Harvey. I never actually read that book before, so I'm going to double tap on that. Now, by Learning the way, title. you can also search for any newspaper, magazine, book, or... Podcast that Vision Australia carries as well. Um, and I, when I say newspapers, Outlook. I mean approximately 200 newspapers from right around Australia. Um, we cover, cover all the major publications. Right, so I've just loaded the book. I'm going to press the middle of the screen again. Play button. And by the way, if I didn't know where that play button was, I could flick left and flick right. And when I get to where it says the play button, I could also do a, a double tap on the screen where I play now. Pause. Far cry by John Harvey. So that's an electronic voice introducing the book. And now we'll have... Next. Button. Next. Talk. About this daisy title. Next Next again. Go next. To this audio presents an unabridged... Next chapter. Next. Part one. Here we go. Chapter one. Ruth sets down her cup, crosses the room, and opens the drawer. The kitchen floor strikes cold, even through Pause. her slippered feet. Button. Play. And there we go. And I could see, I could do exactly the same with the podcast and the magazines and, and everything else. So that works really, really nicely. And that's completely free uh, to Vision Australia uh, customers. That like I said that uh, if you're eligible to use the Vision Australia library with a print disability, you don't have to be blind or low vision, but also have a print disability. Absolutely amazing type stuff. The other two ones that I, that I want to talk about, which are also my favourite, Twitter, um, is my audible app so if i go and open up audible but david just before we move on sorry um we just had right. a question a minute ago yep. um, about how to find the information on how to use the victor reader stream or track mm -hmm. um so there are manuals and okay. also some tracking, sorry, yeah, that we can help out with. yep 
It's over there. <laughs> um, and of course, we also have our access technology specialists that can assist with some training if need be as well. Yeah, and you can also go onto the, the, the Vision Australia library website. It also has information and guides and instructions on how to use this stuff as well. Cool. You know, you just did exactly what my wife does when I'm using Siri, Troy. You talked when I was halfway using Siri, you naughty person, you. <laughs> 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 All right, that's it. Black, black mark for the day. Yeah. All right. I'm, let me open up Audible. Open Audible. Audible. Close. Okay. Button. Now, play. Button. Outlook. Now. Here's my Outlook going off again. So let me just press, this is Audible. So I'm going to double tap on Audible. Probably Pause. wouldn't have been in this situation to begin with if she hadn't insisted that I take her out here. Still, she is the only person who believed my story. Play. Okay, I'm just reading out. This is a, a book about magic and wizards and all that sort of stuff that I really, really enjoy. So this is just a, this is a straight Audible account using the Audible app, and of course the Audible app is basically available on practically anything these days. So um, iPhone, Android, um, you can also download the Audible books to your Windows or your Mac as well. And what you can also do, if I wake up my Amazon Echo, which is right next to me, I can say, "Read my last Audible book." Getting your selection from Audible, resuming Fall of Radiance. Before dark, Zara's hands clasp my sides as we ride, and I am surprised to find her company right And that's picked up from exactly the same spot where she I had it on the Audible app. Well I just say, stop. And the other really cool thing is you've also got, remember, got the Kindle app, which is the, like the, the electronic text files that, or books that you get from Amazon. That's also available on the Kindle. So I could just sit back and listen to my audio Audible books or my Kindle books on the Amazon Echo. So if I say to my Amazon Echo here, read my last book from Kindle. Resuming your most recent book, Asylum. A Star Kingdom science fiction adventure novel. Mari Moonraiser adjusted her ocular implants to simulate normal human eyesight as she gazed over the forest of evergreens toward the rising She's sun. She's a cyborg, by the way. Pinks and oranges burnished the blue sky, the sight gorgeous and still novel to someone who'd spent most of her life on spaceships and habitats. She Stop. So again, we've gone from something as straightforward as the Envoy Connect coming off a Windows computer. If you do use a Mac, you can still download files onto the Envoy Connect or even Windows for that matter by just plugging in like a normal USB drive. That will also work. Uh, then you've got those sort of the more enhanced versions of say both the Victor Reader Stream and the Victor Trek. Uh, and then we move on to apps on the smart phones, the smartphone. So the VA Connect to app running on Android or iOS devices, iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad. And then I mentioned the two main stream book applications, both for Audible and for Kindle, but also accessing either of those two services off your Amazon Echo, which is pretty amazing. If you happen to use an Amazon Echo Show, which actually has the the five eight or 10 in screen you can also see the text of the actual kindle book of course on the screen and it, and it being a screen based kindle you can adjust the font size to have it read out, not only have it read out to you but it also being increased magnification or font size on the screen as well which is actually pretty amazing um, the other sort of services that are also available um, you can get library vox books which are, fr are free and that's Library Vox. Um, but I find their books, because they're done by sort of anybody and everybody around the world, I don't know if the quality is that fantastic, but that also exists as well. Um, the books on the Google Play side of things are probably not as extensive as the Amazon one. Um, and the thing I don't particularly like about the Apple books, so we've got the Apple books, which is like Kindle books, um, and their audio books, which is just called books, just to be very confusing. Um, you can only listen to them on an Apple device. So that restricts it in somewhat. So I always say to people, look, it's either really the Vision Australia library, if you want to get access to our book library, or if you want to get access to Audible and Kindle books, then you're much better off in some ways using a smart speaker like the Amazon Echo, or go and look up lots of different free services. Um, if you use 
a Google, and I haven't tried this on my Echo, but if you use a smart speaker with the Google Nest one, you can say um, book reader, read a book title, and it will access the library Vox free service via that. Um, but sometimes I've noticed it works and sometimes it actually doesn't. Um, but again, with all these different options, that's why we have the AT service that Troy mentioned. And then we've also got an AT or an adaptive technology help desk where you can actually bring up and ask uh, different questions about all these different types of options. Uh, but but the, the thing about the all the different speech you've been hearing from my phone talking to you um, to the electronic voice on the Amazon Echo Dot here, give yourself a chance to get used to the voice because it's like everything. It's like meeting somebody with a, a, an accent for the first time. After a little while, you don't even notice that they've got an accent and that's the same with electronic speech because you're getting access to the information. You're just having to listen to it slightly differently, perhaps at the way that everybody else does. Uh, Tony or Troy, have I missed anything in the, the quick summary of uh, reading options for electronic hardware? No. Um, maybe oh. just screen readers for uh, computers? Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, yeah, hard. those things. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, about 10 minutes left, okay. so I thought we, will, uh, we could finish up on um, how we can access uh, print on a computer. That's a good idea. Or text on a computer. Gee, I wonder why I didn't think about that one. I'm, just saying. <laughs> See, I, I'm so into these days about mobile devices and smart speakers that I forget about the fact that I've actually got a Mac sitting in front of me. So, um, <laughs> all right. So there's quite a few few options and I'll, I'll try and keep this concise. But if you're a low vision person, of course, you can get built-in magnification for both Windows and Mac. So that's part of the ease of access. So that will literally be large print on the screen. And yes, you can get third-party software, but... If you just want to have a play with magnification at first, then go and have a look at what's just called Windows Magnify in Windows 10. The screen reader, which basically makes everything talk on the computer. All right. So if I cheat and take my cable out of my iPhone and go and stick it back in my Mac. Plug it into the side. You should now hear Antonio Troy. You can confirm if you can hear this. Can you hear I mean, something? Very, very faint. Very, very faint. Mm. Very, very faint. Oh, that's a bit boring, isn't it? Hang on <laughs> oh, I know why it's faint. Sorry. I'm just going to volume. How's that? It's a little bit louder. Oh, it's, okay, no, wait, no worries. All right, so but basically if I bring up a document um, on the internet or I read an article off, say, the Sydney Morning Herald, the speech will read to me. Uh, so with narrator, it will not, not only read the web page, but it will also read um, all the sort of the controls and buttons and everything else on the screen. So it's for a person that's completely blind. Now, if you're a sort of an intermediate sort of, low vision stroke person using speech person you're in between you can also get software uh that actually does uh will just basically read out to you what's ever been highlighted so not the whole computer so if you happen to use microsoft edge as your web browser on windows 10 it's got a readout option so it will try and read out properly any article that's on the screen when you're reading with microsoft edge and it's a beautiful voice to actually listen to and there's also other software you can get for um, Windows as well that, again, will only read out the actual hi highlighted text. And on a Mac, it's all built in. So on a Mac, you've got the system Zoom. You've got VoiceOver, which is the speech program I'm using on my Mac here at the moment. But you've also got this thing called shortcut key for text selection. So on my Mac, if I press Option-Command-1, and I'm not running voiceover, but I just want something to read that I've highlighted. If I highlight something with the keyboard or the mouse and press option command one, it will read out to me that text that's been highlighted, whether that's in an email, a pages document or a web page. So that you as a low vision person doesn't get overwhelmed by all this sort of voiceover speaking stuff going on. You can just concentrate on what you want to read back to you with speech because you might be getting eye fatigue and so on. Uh, so again, just quick summary on Windows. It's Windows Magnifier. 
Windows Narrator for the speech or third party options just to read what you've highlighted. On a Mac, it's System Zoom for large print, it's VoiceOver for speech output, and it's the text to speech um, option for just reading out what's been highlighted via the keyboard. So that works quite well. And on your iPhone, in particular, and your iPod Touch and your iPad, if you go into accessibility options, underneath where you've got VoiceOver and Zoom, it has an option there that says spoken text. And that works in a very similar way to what I said the highlight function does. It will just purely read out wherever you want it to start reading to. So you don't have to run large print. You don't have to run speech. You just run the spoken text and you can use it whenever you need to. Pretty amazing type of technology. As I said previously, you can get third-party software and you'll hear people talk about Zoom text, screen magnifier, JAWS, the sort of the all Mercedes Benz of screen reading for Windows that's primarily used for education and employment. Uh, the free version of a speech program called NVDA, Non-Visual Desktop Access. Uh, and when we sort of jump back and look at mobile devices and tablets, um, you've got voiceover through all for all of them on the iPhone, iPod Touch or iPad, system Zoom, the same as the Mac. On Android, the talking program is called TalkBack. Uh, and and uh, Android strikes Samsung being Android slash Samsung. They don't get too fancy. The magnification is just called magnification. So <laughs> there's nothing tremendously fantastic about the name. But they all work to some extent, depending on what your needs are. And again, that's honestly why you need an assessment. Because you could, you're, we've been through a lot of stuff today. And there's a lot of stuff involved and what you need and what's best for you is all about your own having an assessment. So certainly come into the shop, have a look on our webpage for the web shop itself, um, have a talk to the IT help desk. But at the end of the day, if you're not sure about all the ins and outs of this type of stuff, that's when you really need to sit down with one of our adaptive or sorry, access technology specialists and have a go through and play with and trial whatever solution that you arrive with by talking to one of our specialists. I totally agree. And for any uh, <clears throat> magnification devices, you can always book in a low vision assessment with your orthoptist or optometrist at your local Vision Australia office as well. We have a few minutes left. So if there are any other questions, please use the chat box. Um, otherwise, is there anything else you wanted to add, David or Troy? I'm just thinking uh, also for anybody that's new to the vision loss world, um, it's quite common for people when they're reading to actually have fluctuations in their sight. So those static magnifiers, while you're finding it might work at you know one time, it might be a bit blurry at others, um, that you will change your eyesight fluctuation uh, quite often depending on stress levels, lighting, time of year, all those different characteristics can actually have an effect on um, any sort of device that you're using. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Yep. The other thing I wanted to ask, Tony, and I think I asked you this other day too, how well do those... Um, how well do those little sheets work? The ones that you put across a, a bit of paper that do have magnification in them, are they very helpful at all? Uh, these A4 size acrylic sheets. Yes, correct. <laughs> so those basically, ones. it's very, 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 very low strength, um, two times uh, in, in magnification size. So it only works quite well if you have very, very mild um, uh, vision loss. Mm. Um, so if you have something, if, you, if your vision loss is more moderate to advanced, then that's um, not the right strength. Yes. Um, and that's where you'll probably need uh, an assessment done with um, our orthoptist or optometrist at a low vision clinic. Or feel free to come into any of our vision store branches to have a browse of the various magnification devices that we do have. Mm. And our retail corners and offices can, um, can sort of help you out as well. Uh, just a couple of last minute questions. <laughs> um, Katharina has, has mentioned, I do a fair, fair bit of reading of bilingual dictionaries and receive messages in three to four languages. <laughs> what can handle that? Mm. Um, I, think, uh, I, I think some I'll of the reading ahead, machines, yeah, I think some of the reading machines do. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think, I 
have to check, but I think with the Seeing AI app, it's supposed to actually determine what it's reading, I believe. Um, but because it's a free app, I, if I was using a smartphone at all, I'd be just checking that one out. With some of the speech screen readers in particular, I think JAWS does it from a screen reading point of view. If the document's been marked up correctly, as in the document knows there's a language change going on in the document, um, then uh, JAWS will automatically switch languages to read in the appropriate language. Because I remember talking to a few children at school mm -hmm. and they were doing English. So they had like, sorry, English and French, uh, learning French. So they had like, you know, English, French, English, French translations reading down the page and JAWS would automatically switch the language because in the, in the metadata for the actual document, it was marked up with the English and French paragraph wording going on. So that sort of stuff would definitely work. Yep. Uh, just um, running out of time, but in terms of Les' question about training for voiceover, um, yes, you can book in an appointment with our ATS team and that can help you with training on using voiceover on your device. Um, can Foxtel have voiceover to read everything to you? I don't think that is possible. No. <laughs> um, and yeah, sorry, Pauline, that's not possible at this point in time. But Troy, did you just want to wrap things up? Yep, just before we do go, I just also want to uh, mention with the OCRs um, devices, so your optical character rec recognition devices, that they can struggle reading handwriting. Um, mm -hmm. So it is print text um, is preferred mm -hmm. medium. Yep. That is correct. Yep. All right, guys, I'm going to turn my camera off here so you don't have to look at the back of a sheet. While I get ready. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so first up, I want to thank you um, to everybody for tuning in and having this discussion with us. And hopefully you've learned something. Um, if you have any further questions, please contact Vision Store team. Uh, that, you can contact us on 1300 or you, alternatively, you can email us at visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Uh, and we'll, somebody can get back to you uh, reasonably quickly with an answer or we can follow up and find the answers for you. At the end of this webinar, there will be a short survey for you to complete. Any feedback that you could provide will assist us in improving our content and delivery of future webinars. Uh, we'd love for you to join us at our next Exploring Technology webinar with David Woodbridge. Uh, and the topic is reading solutions from quantum. Uh, reading learning solutions from quantum. Um, so, so either e uh, check your emails or our website to find out when the details are on for that. And thank you and goodbye. Thanks. Thank lot, you guys. everyone for joining us. Thanks, David. Thanks, Troy. Thank you. Bye. Bye, folks.